Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Today we look at another project and we try to steal anything that's useful from it. Because after all this is open source, we're really meant to do these kind of things, to get inspired from other projects and then copy paste their work without any kind of credit. Of course, I'm just kidding. This video is structured in three parts. Firstly, I'm going to talk about all the things where I think that XFC is actually playing catch up with Plasma, that is all the features that XFC is introducing now and that Kitty Plasma has. Then I'm going to talk about the things that I don't even know how to compare between the two and finally all the things that indeed I think Kitty Plasma can learn from XFC. Starting off, XFC now has a dialog that uh, to input file names and it actually checks for the validity of file names. It checks whether they end with spaces and shows a warning or if they end with a slash which is incorrect and shows you an error. Kitty Plasma has that. Actually, it's been introduced and the error box is actually, in my opinion, a bit better at telling the user what is going on. So yeah, full point to Plasma here. XFC is also introducing a shortcut editor. You can see all the shortcuts, you can press on one and you can just enter whatever to tell that application to use that shortcut. However, for now, it's only being used in Thunar, XFC Terminal and Mousepad. In theory, this should grow into other projects as well. Does Kitty Plasma have that? Well, yes. You're probably not surprised Kitty Plasma is really meant to be customized and shortcuts are an extremely important part of that. Then something very interesting, the clock and daytime uh, widgets, applets, how do they call it? have been merged in just one because there was some redundant code and I'm really happy for that actually. And although yes, Kitty Plasma already has daytime and clock in the same very applet, we also have a prog problem with fragmentation of the clock applets. If you go into the clock and then show alternatives, you will see that there are a lot of different clocks and often enough they don't actually share code, which means that stuff has to be re-implemented for each of them, which is a pretty big issue actually. XFC addresses that using layouts. If you go into settings, you can see that there's a layout section and you can change between layouts, still without having to change the actual applet. So thumbs up and yes, we could actually learn from this, even though we have a clock. Search bar is now always shown on system settings and this is a great choice. You should always give the user an option to search for settings. That's the easiest way to find them really. I think that Kitty Plasma settings do this in a very nice way. You do have the search box and whilst typing it also live filters throughout all the sections and shows you what sections have matched what you're searching for. I think it's a very nice implementation. So great job on XFC for going toward this direction. Then we switch to Thunar and there are a couple of improvements to list mode which Dolphin has. Now, however, in Thunar, you can see the number of files within a folder and also when that folder or file was created. You do actually have a dialog to customize all of the things that are shown. And there's not much to say here. Obviously, Dolphin has it and also has a lot of other things. Actually, if you go look, the amount of things that you can show on list mode is pretty impressive. There's also a new image preview pane into Thunar, which Dolphin also has, but it's interesting to see how do you actually get to it. In both cases, you have to go into settings. However, Dolphin doesn't have a menu bar anymore. It has an hamburger menu. You need to go into that and then go into panels. And I actually didn't know that. And how I used to do it every time was go into edit mode for panels, which is a bit of a mess. So I think that Thunar is implementing this very nicely. Then Thunar is also implementing undo and redo for file operations. That's pretty cool and yeah, Dolphin has that. <laughs> we are going to get to the section of we don't have that, don't worry. There's also now the ability to customize the toolbar. You can see this is the dialog to customize it in XFC and this is the dialog to customize it in Dolphin. They look actually very different. I, I'm not sure which one is better and I'll guess that I'll let you choose. And we also get split view inside of Thurner, which is something that Dolphin has had for quite some time. However, I really want to say here, it is impressive the amount of catch up that XFC is playing. All of these features 
XFC didn't have, and now it's on par with KD Plasma. So if you want to switch to XFC, now, well, they're making this much easier. Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Another thing they got is a recent section in their sidebar. Dolphin has it separated for files and documents. However, I think that the idea is pretty much the same one. Another one which I wasn't initially sure how to compare is bookmarking, which apparently is the action of actually adding a folder in to the left sidebar, which in Dolphin is called add to places. They did have that previously, obviously, but apparently it was quite hidden, so now they've made it more clear, which is very nice. Also, you do get a list of bookmarked folders, which is something that you do not get on Dolphin, so that's pretty cool. And finally, if you enter trash, you actually get this bigger banner at the bottom that tells you, do you want to clear the trash and delete everything? Or do you want to recover the files? Which is pretty nice. Now, Dolphin has that, that is you do have these two buttons. However, the delete all files one might not be noticed very quickly. It is here, you, you might have not seen it. And as far as I know, you don't have the option to just have a button to recover all files. However, you can select them and then right click recover. So you do have those options, but I think that Tuner does expose them really well. So thumbs up. Moving on to section two, things that I didn't quite know how to compare. Starting off with thumbnails, they've actually improved thumbnailing a lot. After that GNOME started supporting that in dialogues, you know, that was important. Firstly, now there's support for X large and XX large thumbnails, which is apparently important for higher resolution displays, makes sense. And secondly, thumbnails are now shared between users, which means that you don't have to generate the same thumbnail for two different users. Does KD Plasma do that? I have not, <laughs> I have no idea, N no idea whatsoever. <laughs> You can now also hide the delete button in Thunar not to mess things up. I'm not sure how this compares to Dolphin. I think that not only you can do that, I think it's actually on by default. Like I think that by default on Dolphin, you cannot actually delete any anything and you can just trash them, but I'm not sure. So your millage may vary. Then there's this. If you're setting a theme, you can also set a matching XFWM for theme if there's any. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> However, it starts with XF, so I think it's nothing that KD Plasma should be worried about. I might be wrong. You also get recursive search inside of Thunar, which is a super cool feature. Now, does KD Plasma, KD Dolphin has that? Kind of, kind of. So we do have filtering, which is not recursive, obviously, and we do have search inside of Dolphin, which uses Baloo. So this is not actually search that you do like when you actually search something. Baloo does indexing and then you search the Baloo database. Some people like that, some people don't, and sometimes you cannot index what you're looking for. As an example, if you're a KDE developer, like I am, you know that your KDE folder is not indexed by Baloo, which means that if you have to search anything instead of it, you cannot use Dolphin Search, as far as I know, I might be wrong. <laughs> However, KDE does offer a tool out of the box to do recursive search, and that is called KFind, and you can open KFind right from Dolphin Search, which is pretty cool. However, that's technically a different application, whereas the cool feature of Thunar is that it has it inside of Thunar itself. So I'm not even sure how to compare the two. Finally, let's talk about all the things that XFC just implemented that KDE hasn't and that we could learn from. Firstly, you can now choose what to do when you connect a new display. Now, out of the box, if I understand this correctly, KD Plasma shows you the dialogue with this one. And I thought, I mean, this is KD Plasma, there's gotta be a way to customize that. There isn't, actually. Maybe you can disable it, but it's not clear how. So it's very nice that actually XFC gives you an option right in the display configuration. So thumbs up. By the way, that Plasma dialog is super cool, but it's a bit hidden, especially if you want to change it after you maybe accidentally close the dialog. 
to do that, you kind of have to show the display applet and you could rely on the fact that the system tray should show it to you after you connect a display. But for me, that particular applet is actually disabled. I'm not sure how it works, but for the past, for me, it has never quite worked reliably. So I actually have to go into system tray and enable it or always show it, which is weird. I do also want to point out a couple of issues that KD Plasma has or has had with its shortcut editor. Now, firstly, for a very long period of time, looks like it's now fixed, but for a very long period of time, you just couldn't set any shortcut that had the tab key inside of it. Because in the shortcut editor, every time you pressed tab, it was switched to the next element, like when you change focus. That was a bug that was eventually fixed because it works on my machine now, but I actually stopped using all shortcuts that has tab inside of it because I was previously used to customizing them and then I just couldn't. So that was a pre pretty big issue. Secondly, there's currently no way to set a shortcut to the meta key. Now, yes, if you press meta, then a kickoff or your application launcher pops up. However, that's actually hard coded, which is bad in my opinion. There is actually no way to set meta. So I really wanted to point that out. What else? Turner now allows you to set background and foreground colors for folders separately, which is super cool and something that KD Plasma just hasn't. Now, in Dolphin, you can change the color of the folders. However, to do that, it's a bit of a mess. You have to like change the icon and I wouldn't suggest doing that. So it's not something Dolphin has to the best of my knowledge. Thumbs up to XFC for implementing this. You also have, you remember I talked about split view. You can also do split view horizontally not just vertically like Dolphin, also horizontally. Can Dolphin do that? I don't think so. I have checked the settings and uh, there's always to learn in KD Plasma. You can always miss some settings, but I didn't see it. So as far as I know, Thorner has actually this one feature more than Dolphin. XFCE Thorner also has the option to add some custom actions, even in sub menus, which is like super cool. Now, KD Plasma has something similar to that because you know you can see all these actions that are related to certain file types. However, this is so cool in XFC, you can actually add them and you can make sub menus out of them. That's just so cool. So, big thumbs up on XFC for implementing something like this. And actually, that was everything from me. There are a couple of more things, but you know, less important stuff and nothing that KD Plasma hasn't to the best of my knowledge. So we can just skip that. Thanks for following along and uh, tomorrow I'll do like one more video. So stay tuned.